Hi everyone out there in MA land and welcome to this tutorial on how to use the Vectorworks Spotlight's MA export plugin. In here we'll walk through downloading and installing the plugin and then use it in a simple example. So let's get started. First uh, we're here at actlighting.com and we go to the downloads page and we scroll down to the MA2 utility section and download the Vectorworks Spotlight plugin. I've already done that to save a little time. Once the plugin is downloaded, it needs to go into the plugins folder in Vectorworks. So on a Mac here, you go to Applications, Vectorworks 2016, Plugins, and you can see here I've pasted the Export Grammar 2 Setup plugin. Okay, now that the plugin is in the correct folder, back in Vectorworks here, we have to add it to our menu structure. So the way to do that is we go to Tools, Workspaces, Edit Current Workspace. On the left hand side here, we're going to have our plugins. On the right hand side, our menus. So if we go to Import Export, we'll find our Export Grammar 2 Setup plugin. And now we need to decide where in our menu structure we want it to go. What makes sense to me personally is File export is to have it right with all the other export options. So we come back here, grab the grammar to setup, and I'm going to put it right at the top where it'll be super easy to find. So we hit OK and confirm. Vectorworks is going to refresh itself. And then once it does, Be able to come up here to File, Export, Export Grammar 2 Setup. Great. So now, before we actually use the exporter, there are a couple things I want to point out. First is that you need to fill in at least two pieces of information for your fixtures for the exporter to be really useful a DMX address and a channel or fixture ID. Second is that I have positioned my fixtures not just in 2D space, but in 3D space as well. So they have X and Y coordinates, but also Z coordinates. And the other thing is that, if we adjust this angle a little bit, I've actually created three focus points here for my conventionals and color forces to use to give them some rotation information. And then coming back to our top line here, if we zoom in on our channel hookup, it's a little too far there, you can see that I've given some of my conventionals color information as well, which the exporter will bring in along with everything else. All right, so now that we have everything set, we're going to go to File, Export, Export Grammar 2 Setup. And this gives us our dialog box here. So the first thing is how do we want to separate our MA patch layers? We have some options here, but I'm going to choose to do that by fixture type. Next, we set which fields we're using for our information. So for the DMX address field, we have a long list here. I have conveniently chosen the address field. And one thing to note is that this isn't just flexible in how, in which fields you use, but also it's very flexible in how you input information into those fields. So if we look over here at our channel hookup, I've actually input my addresses in five different ways. So the first one is using universe dot address, so dot is a separator, right? So in the same column I just said, Channel 3 here is getting patched to universe 1 dot address 4. Uh, next one down here, if we look at channel 31, these three fixtures, they, I used co uh, comma as a separator instead of dot, so universe 1 comma address 10 here. Down here, I used slash as a separator, so universe 4 address 99 for this color force. Uh, for our alpha spots here, I've put a universe into the universe field, so universe 3 here, and then address 47. 
And then the last way is with an absolute address. So my alpha wash here, I put an absolute address of 529, which corresponds with universe 2 address 17. Right, so as I said, very flexible in how you input the information as well. For my fixture ID, I'm using the channel field. And I like to have my channel ID and fixture ID match. So I'm going to set that to channel as well. Uh, if you didn't want to have a channel field or and only a fixture ID or vice versa, you could set one of these to none as well if you wanted to. Okay, next we have the fixture types section here. This first column allows us to choose which fixture types we want to export. I want to export everything except for the scrollers since they'll be a part of my dim and scroll fixture type in the console. So I'm going to uncheck that. The rotation columns, rotation offset columns, are for if your fixture's default rotation is different between Vectorworks and MA. MA has the fixture's default to being imported as pointing straight down. So if Vectorworks had the fixture's default to appearing as pointing straight up and we rotated from there, when we brought them into MA, they'd be 180 degrees off of where we really wanted them. These columns allow you to take that into account. Over here, we're going to check the Use Focus box for the Color Forces, Conventionals, and Dim and Scroll fixtures because they're all getting rotation information from pointing at those focus points. Next, we have our MA fixture type number. This it, these numbers correspond to the lines, the line numbers in your MA patch. So to know what those are, we're going to come over here to on PC. And we're going to go to setup, patch and fixture schedule, fixture types. Here I've got the dimmers, the dim and scroll, and the alpha spots. So we need to import the clay packy alpha washes and the color forces. Now on mode four here. Okay, so dimmer is two, scroller three, spot four, wash five, color four, six. So close out of that. Yes, I want to save. And if we go back to Vectorworks here, so color force was six, wash was five, conventionals two, spot four, dim and scroll three. Now color force was fixture type six. However, with these color forces in this mode, I have control over each individual cell, which MA calls multi-instance. And if I import them directly this way, then all of their position and rotation information will get lost. So the trick to making sure that all that information is saved is to import them first as a dimmer and then do a fixture swap later. So we're going to set that to the same fixture type as our conventionals. Okay, now multi-break source here. So a multi-break fixture is a fixture that has two different addresses. For example, a VL1K that doesn't have an onboard dimmer. So I actually hear the dim and scroll fixtures are multi-break because I have one address for the dimmer and one address for the scroller. So this multi-break source allows you to specify which field has that second address. So the dim and scroll, I use user field one here. So we set that to user field one. Okay, now here in the settings, if you use the same, if you set all the same settings up here often, then rather than redoing them each time, you can just save them and then load them each time you want to use those same settings. Uh, so we have everything set the way we want it. I'm going to hit export. And this has to go into the import export folder on your thumb drive. So go to my thumb drive here, GMA2 folder, and we don't see an import export folder. So I'm going to hit new folder, import export, all lowercase, no spaces, create. And I'm going to name this something easy to remember like 
my patch. Sure. And the export is done. So now that we're ready to import into MA2, we're going to come back in here. <coughs> and first, I'm going to go to backup and select the USB stick as my default drive, since that's where I store the, since that's where I save the patch, the export file from. Okay, so now I'm going to type into the command line cd edit setup. Okay, that takes me from the root directory into the setup directory. Now you don't have to do this next step, but if you wanted to, you could type list to see all the subdirectories here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say import my patch, right, or whatever your file name, make sure it's in quotes. So import my patch at layers. So what that's going to do is it's going to overwrite this layers subdirectory with the contents of your Vectorworks plot. So we're going to hit please. Right, so it looked in the import export folder and found mypatch.xml and imported it. Okay, to so go back to the root directory, we're going to say cd slash and we're all set. If we go to setup patch and fixture schedule, we'll see all of our layers here with their correct addresses. So washes, conventionals, spots, dim and scroll here, we can see both breaks of our multi-break fixtures. I also had three fixtures which all had the same ID. So they are now multi-patched, which means that all three of these will be controlled with one fixture ID or channel ID. It's the same for this one and these three as well. Okay, now if we go look at our color forces, they got imported as dimmers. So now we're gonna do a we're gonna double tap on fixture type, right click go to color force, right, to choose those, to, or move those to the correct fixture type. Now, unfortunately, that's going to wipe out our patch information, but that's okay because we left enough spacing to begin with. So we're going to double tap on patch, we're going to right click, right click there, say 4.1, right, universe.address, and we're all set. Okay, so we're going to exit out, yes, see our changes. And if we look here at a stage view, we can see all of our fixtures placed. Now, what's really cool is that since they're already placed, we can already, we're all set up to use the follow function in our stage view. And it'll be a little easier to see in MA3D here. We have our color information as well. Pretty neat, huh? Well, that concludes our video tutorial on the Vectorworks plugin. Make sure to check out actlighting.com slash support for more tutorials, both text and video. And feel free to email us at support at if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.